Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA episode 372. I'm Brendan. All right, UFC Fight Night in Mexico City. All right, we're going to talk about the prelims here. This is out of order for me. Usually I do the prelims second, but I'm doing them as the fights are going on. So this is going to be a late night. This is going to be Christian Quinones versus Helene Barcelos, and the rest of the prelims are going to break them all down round by round, go through all that stuff. If you like this kind of thing, subscribe to the channel. That way, when the next video is coming out, I'd appreciate it. Let's get started. Okay, so, boy, this this fight night has already, right, we're not even at the main card yet, it has already gone through a ton of controversial things, okay? And like, this fight is no exception. Um, okay, so, Barcelos was looking for those low kicks and then going for the takedown, he couldn't get it early. Uh, Barcelos used the low kick in the right hand, staggered Quinones, uh, both guys swinging big with the right hands. Barcelos gets the takedown, but gets right back up. In the clinch, Quinones works his way to the back, pulls him away from the fence, and then Barcelos grabs the fence twice, so much so that the fence actually caved in, right? And not, not, and didn't fail or anything. It just, like, the, the, uh, like, it actually, whatever. He pulled it real bad, <laughs> okay? Barcelos' shoulder popped out. In, um, so the first round, Quinones was able to get him to the round and ends it. Um, I had Quinones win in that first round, 10-9. to nine. If you gave it to Barcelos, maybe I, boy. Quinones had a lot of control. He landed some, landed some ground strikes, didn't he? Nope, no ground strikes. Man, there's a lot of that this uh, this night so far. Just a ton of people. With a ton, a lot of control time and getting outstruck and out damaged. Anyway, Barcelos outstruck him twelve to four. Uh, I don't know. I felt like it was closer than that. These numbers might be off uh, because we're looking at them so close to when the fight finished. Normally, the next day, what'll happen is like someone will go through and there might have been some errors. Um, so far, uh, this is what it says. I don't think that's right though. Marcelo's shoulder popped out, and they put it back in between rounds. Quinones uh, throwing the jab out there well. Long range lead uppercut lands once. Uh, Barcelos looking stationary following, not cutting off the cage. Huge right hand from Barcelos. Then Quinones lands one of his own. Barcelos lands a huge right hand. Quinones drops. Then on the way back up, gets kicked in the chest. Barcelos is landing that right hand well, but he's looking tired. Uh, Quinones landing right hands of his own. They both have landed really hard. But man, Quinones landed the bigger shots. I felt like uh, more of them, even though Barcelos landed some big shots of his own, 20 to 18 in favor of Barcelos. But Quinones, man, this second round was close. Um, I lean towards Quinones, and that might be a holdover from Barcelos grabbing the fence in that first round. It was really a bad fence grab. So I, I had a 20 to 18. I know that's not fair and that's not how you do it, but you know, it was subjective. And at the moment, that's what I scored it. Barcelos is chasing, trying to land an overhand right. Quinone is poking his way as he retreats. Barcelos catches a kick, trips to get on top, gets the back and gets a rear naked choke finish. So no judges are necessary, but just to look at the scorecards here, uh, Junichiro Camillo and, uh, Raul Salas both gave, uh, Barcelos that second round. Rick Winter gave, uh, the first two rounds to Quinones. So that for that second round was pretty close. Um, he's the first fence grab that led to a victory this, uh, this year. Uh, interesting, interesting main or uh, feature prelim. That's for sure. Again, controversy did not start there. And then, uh, Jesus Aguilar versus Mateus Mendoza. Boy, this there were so many of these. Uh, Aguilar landing the low kicks, but gets taken down by Mendonca. Then back up. It might be Mendonca. I've heard it pronounced that way. And then Mendonca. So it could be Mendonca. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Back up in the clinch against the cage. Aguilar presses into him. Mendonca with the body. Mendonca uh, with the body lock trip to side control. Aguilar explodes out of the bottom, gets on top, landing some good shots. But then Mendonca goes for the. Arm bar at the end of the round, just can't get it. Close round with top control from both guys. Mendonca got some sub attempts, but Mendonca didn't do the damage, right? Uh, Aguilar did the damage. And here, this was laid out in the striking number seven to one in favor of Aguilar. Control time went to Aguilar too, 251 to 148. Some of that was clinch control time. So actual top control time, how much was that? I think it was pretty damn close. Uh, still though, Aguilar wins that first round. Second round, 
Aguilar landing a hard low kick to start and gets taken down right away again. Aguilar gets out of position, but Mendoza rolls with head control and gets the back. Mendoza gets into the mount, landing some good ground and pound. The exchange on the feet. Aguilar lands a good right hand, gets his own takedown right into mount. Mendoza lands a couple knees and then dives for a bad takedown after they get up. It's a really close round, and I lean towards Mendoza, but it was super close. If you look at the striking numbers here, 13 to 6 went to Mendoza. If you look at control time, went to Mendoza. So, like, Yes, Aguilar had some good good positional stuff, but Mendoza uh, Mendoza won this round. Okay, Mendoza won this one. Last round, but so I had it nineteen and nineteen. Aguilar landing uh, uh, landing the hard kicks and then dives on a guillotine, but because of that, he loses position, can't get it. Mendoza gets out and lands on top. Ref stands them up with uh, Mendoza being in control. I thought the stand-up was a little weird. He didn't really warn him, or at least I didn't hear that. Uh, Mendonca gets the mount and then the back with the body triangle, landing some good ground and pound. Mendonca locks up a triangle to end the round. Obviously, he won this last round. Yes, there was he got outstruck 6-4, of four, but most of this round was spent with uh, Mendonca in control. Four minutes of control time, 20 uh, total strikes. So, yes, the total, the significant damage or significant strikes were in favor of Aguilar, but Mendonca clearly got more strikes in. I clearly had him winning this fight, 29 to 28. But let's see what the judges thought. That is not how they saw it. So, uh, Horatio Lopez and Mike Bell both gave the first two rounds to Aguilar. I disagree. Mike Bell and I don't exactly agree a lot, but um, this night we kind of... Anyway, uh, Eric Colon gave the first and last round to Mendoza. So, the last round of clearly Mendoza's. The second round is where there was some... Uh, Oh, he gave the first round to Mendoza? Did Aguilar rock him in the second round? I don't understand how that was so clearly... Why that? I don't get it. I, I don't agree with that one. I thought that was... Uh, I thought Mendoza did enough. All right, how about a fight where we don't need to talk about... Uh, a fight where we don't need to talk about the scorecards. Edgar uh, Charez versus Daniel Lacerda. Holy shit, Charez missed weight by a hundred uh, by by five pounds, coming in at 131, and Lacerda came in at 127. Um, both guys missed weight. Yes, the six pounds is bad, or the five pounds is bad. Apparently, he was told to stop cutting weight. At least that's what I saw. I, I don't. I don't. It's all hearsay. I have no idea. It's bad. 131 is bad. 127. Um, it's bad. But that's missed by a pound. It should be, you know, you have 126 as your allowance. Charez runs across the cage, and then they exchange kicks to the body. A nice 2-3 uh, from Charez. Then Lacerda gets a takedown, gets on top. Uh, a nice a nice 2 from Charez. And then uh, Charez locks up a triangle from bottom that looked super easy. Super easy for him. Really easy. I, like, I, you can look at the stats. There's not many. Nine shots landed from Charez, but he landed... He, Threw up that uh, triangle from bottom. Beautiful. Looks great. All right. All right. Another one of these. Hopefully, I don't think this one was controversial. I don't think it was controversial. Let's see. Claudio Poyas versus uh, Faraz Ziam or Faraz Ziam. Ziam comes out with a low kick. Poyas gets a single leg on top and looked way too easy to get that takedown. Uh, Ziam just does not have good takedown defense. Ziam stands back up but doesn't break the body lock. They get back down. Ziam gets back up and finally separates with 2.11 left. Jab from Ziam puts Poyas down. <sighs> Some follow-up ground and pound, but then he backs away. Poyas gets a big double leg slam. Poyas had a ton of control but no damage. Zero damage. Look at this. 9-2 to two in favor of Ziam. Three minutes and 20 seconds for Poyas of control time. He just didn't do enough with it. Look at the ground strikes. Landed zero ground strikes with all that control time. Ziam landed six ground strikes. Like, you got to do something. I talk about this all the time. You got to throw strikes when you're in there. If they're little, if they're in between some short elbows, you got to throw something. Because if you do that, you're scoring damage in that position. Right? And the little ones add up. And if you're landing damage in those positions, you're going to win the fight. Or at least that round. Uh, Ziam landing some good knees to the head. Poyas able to shoot from a mile away and work his way up to a takedown. Ziam stands up and Poyas goes goes backpack uh, with a minute and 30 left, but he can't hold on to it. Ziam ends up on top, and then now he lands some good damage down the stretch. Again, same thing. 
Zero strikes landed from Poyas in this round. Zero strikes. How many total strikes did he, or zero significant strikes? He landed four total strikes in this round with a minute and 39 seconds of control time when he had the back and everything. He did zero damage. How many submission attempts did he have this round? Zero. He was working to put himself in better position, but never doing damage and never actively going for the finish. That's why ZM wins this round too. Like it's, I, I had a 20 to 18. Last round, in the clinch, Ziam landing a little bit, but Poyas gets a takedown. Uh, Ziam gets a deep guillotine, sweeps, and then they get right back up. They change positions. Ziam went for a guillotine again. Ziam on top actually lands some shots. Eight to two. Significant strikes. The control time was a lot closer in this round, 146 to uh, 214 in favor of Poyas. So, like, let's just call it a wash. And Poyas landed no damage again. The guy has a real problem. When he gets on the ground, he does no damage, and he's just grappling. And unless you get the finish, you're not going to get the fight like this. And let, uh, let's see how the... These 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 judges are, like, all over the place. Raul Salas, he gave the first and last round to Poyas. Doing almost... The last round was... He gave the second round to Ziam, though. Horrible. Mike Bell saw it the same way I did, 30-27, and Chris Lee had a 29-28 in favor of Ziam. The right guy won that fight. That card is bad. Like, Solace, like, that, those, if you go by the rules, that's just not how it goes. Ugh. It's okay. We'll, we'll get to, uh, we'll get to the worst one of them all eventually. Okay, Ronaldo Rodriguez versus uh, Dennis Bondar. Boy, these guys look real good. Bondar missed weight, uh, missing and then shelling up. Bondar landing a nice right hand, going right for the takedown. Bondar gets the back, but Rod Re Rodriguez reverses, takes some nasty elbows, uh, even though he was on top, uh, just stands up instead. They exchange some leg kicks, and Bondar hits a beautiful right hand and the takedown yet again. Bondar with some nice ground and pound. Bondar landing some good body kicks. Some hooks up top. Rodriguez just eats them and walks forward. And this is where it started to change. You know, Rodriguez lands a nice right hand and then gets uh, he takes a hard spinning elbow, but just walks through that too. Hard right hook, uh, like it seemed to, or hard left hook hurt Bondar. It seemed like it bothered him pretty uh, pretty bad. He goes for a takedown again. He hit it well. Rodriguez looked really good down the stretch, but that was clearly Bondar's round, 31 to 14. Second round, lots of kicks from Bondar to start the second round. Rodriguez throwing big loopy hooks, just eating the kicks. Bondar lands another spinning elbow, catches a kick, gets a takedown, and but he, he goes to the back and slips off and gets reversed. And then on bottom, you know, he goes for a heel hook, takes some ground and pound for his trouble. Uh, Rodriguez gets it back and gets a rear naked choke finish. Um, let's let's see how they scored this first round. All three of them gave it to Bondar. Okay, that's good. At least they did that correct. But yeah, man, like this fight. Uh, it had its moments where it was fun, but it never looked like Bondar was going to get the finish. It didn't look like he ever hurt him. And, you know, when you're doing that, you got to adjust your game plan. You can't just throw the big things. you got you got to realize, like, okay, I'm going to have to tech, uh, technique my way out of this, and I'm not going to be able to just, you know, knock him out and get out of there early. Victor Altamoreno versus uh, Felipe Dos Santos. Oh, another one. Another split decision. Low kicks from Alta Moreno and some uh, some spinning and then the high kicks. Dos Santos trying to corral him and walk him down. Very sporadic to start the fight. Alta Moreno gets the momentary takedown, but they get back up. Alta Moreno moves in and they both land, but he gets the body lock takedown even, uh, even though Dos Santos grabs the fence. Dos Santos not able to stay in control, and Alta Moreno did more damage. Alta Moreno outlanded him 9-6. to six. There was some control time for Alta Moreno. Two minutes. Um, I, I think that Dos Santos clearly lost his first round. No controversy there. We'll see. Uh, but that should be uh, Altamoreno's round. Dos Santos isn't swinging big and can't get anything going. Altamoreno is slowing his output a little bit, and Dos Santos can throw, but that only lasts for about a minute, and then the takedown from Altamoreno and some good ground and pound. Dos Santos countering a low kick with a hard right hand and then a left, and Altamoreno staggered a bit. Um, so that did hurt him. And then Dos Santos gets it, uh, gets taken down again, and I just don't think he did enough damage. I don't think he did enough damage in this in this one. I thought Alta Moreno did enough. Uh, he had a minute and twenty three seconds of control time. I felt like he did enough damage. Like like I said, fourteen to thirteen in favor of Dos Santos, but I like again, I don't think 
he landed one really good shot, but that's just not. That was weird. My screens just went all over the place. I really hope my audio is not screwed up. Oh boy. And now my camera won't focus either. Focus. Anyway, all right, let's get into the last round here. Uh, Altamirano overextends on his right, and Dos Santos catches him with a right of his own. Dos Santos climbs the back and gets right into the rear naked choke attempt, but Altamirano fights it off. Uh, both guys are breathing heavy. Dos Santos pressuring forward, but gets to take, uh, but gets taken down yet again. Altamirano backing up a lot, trying to get his breath. Dos Santos is catching him with some hard hooks as he walks him down. If you give Dos Santos any of the other rounds, you can have it for him. But uh, for me, it was 29 to 28 Altamirano. Yes, the last round went to Dos Santos for sure. Even though he got outstruck 18 to 17, the damage was in favor of Dos Santos. The look, everything about it, the control time was not that big of a deal. Um, I, I, that's, I had it for, uh, Dos An the last round for Dos Santos, but one of the judges had all three rounds for Alta Moreno, uh, Miguel Jimenez, right? No home cooking there. Uh, giving it to Alta Moreno. Boy, if you, car, cartels might be in his pocket. Uh, Mike Bell giving the last two rounds to Dos Santos. See, I just don't think... I don't think Dos Santos did enough in that second round, and Janitro Camillo did this. Said the same thing. I just don't. I didn't see that. I thought Altamirano won that one. It was, you know, close enough uh, that it's not a uh, not a robbery by any sense, but it wasn't uh, that that last round should not have been his. So like the scoring was all over the place. Oh, yeah. Eric Silva versus Mohamed Naimos. Uh, both guys bound up real tight. Naimos partially lands a spinning back kick is what I thought, but he didn't land it. They go to the ground. Silva's grabbing his leg. Silva looked to have hurt his knee. That's how the fight ends. It's a really an injury stoppage. It's not a TKO. Uh, had nothing to do with what Naimov did. Um, yeah, Naimov didn't do anything special. Um, did I say Naimos? Good grief. Naimov is his name. So it sucks for Silva. I don't think that the, like, I hope that's not serious. It looked like uh, they said it was, might have, might have been an MCL tear. Uh, I hope he uh, recovered. You can recover from that one relatively quickly. So I hope it's not too bad. All right. Uh, that is it for this one. Please subscribe to the channel if you like this stuff. That way they know the next video is coming out. Like this video if you liked it. Um, and then I'll be putting out to the uh, main main event uh, video after this one, after the main event concludes. It'd be weird if I did it while it was going on, huh? <laughs> All right. Peace. Have a great week.